Hi, I'm Dick Zeller from Cadre. I want to share with you the latest version of our Table 7 Dispute Resolution Data Drill Tool. The version I will demonstrate is set up for use with the 2010-2011 data, but since nothing has changed in the reporting requirements from last year to this year, you can also use it to examine your 2009-10 data. We hope you find this tool useful in preparing your February 2012 APR submission. You can get a copy of this report from the Cadre website by going to www.directionservice.org slash cadre slash datasubmission.cfm or by entering data drill in the text search on our website. Well, let's look at the tool. Okay, I'm going to open the data drill tool in Excel and that's how you should do it. You should download it, save it to your computer in some convenient location, and then open it within the Excel software. If you op open it and try to operate directly within a browser, all the functions won't work. You may see this warning, security warning, macros have been disabled, help protect me from unknown content. Just click OK. There's nothing in here that involves macros or presents any problems for you. The first page you see is the Instructions tab. Please note that there's a request for feedback once you've had a chance to use the tool. Note also that this tool is not for reporting your 618 data to the Data Accountability Center, although the rules we have used to guide accuracy in the numbers are the same as those used uh, by the DAC. So click on any of, of the four data entry tabs at the bottom, in this case Section A, Written Complaints, if you're familiar with Table 7, you'll notice immediately that Section A, Written Complaints, this portion of it, is the same as what appears on Table 7. Uh, enter your data here. For example, I'll make up some data. 86 complaints filed, and as soon as I hit Return, you'll notice that three other red cells light up. The relationship among these cells is described down here in the first part of the Notes, Calculations, and Error Checks part of the spreadsheet. In this case, complaints filed, cell 1, must be equal to the sum of cells 1.1, complaints with reports issued, 1.2, complaints pending, and 1.3, complaints withdrawn or dismissed. I'll fill in some possible numbers here. 54 complaints filed, 4 pending, 28 withdrawn or dismissed, uh, and you'll see the red disappears meaning that these numbers do not violate the definitions provided in the Table 7 instructions. If you want to review any of the instructions and cell definitions, click on any cell to the left, that is in column B, and you'll go to an Instructions tab. So, for example, Reports with Findings of Noncompliance. Uh, they're defined here as the written decision of the SEA in response to a complaint which finds the public agency out of compliance with one or more requirements uh, of Part B. Click on Return to Complaints and you're back to the data entry sheet. I'll complete some other numbers here quickly. 47 reports with non-compliance. I'll say 49 within, within 60 days. 5 with an extension. And 1 pending a due process hearing. So now the data are complete. Once you've filled in the data on uh, any of the data entry spreadsheets, you can scroll down and see ways to compare your state to other states. So how do you compare to the national average on this indicator and other intermediate indicators from Table 7? Well, on indicator 16, this state got 100%. National average is 98.4% complaint investigations that resulted in a completed investigation and report, 63%, a little below national average of 68%, but findings of noncompliance, 87%, and nationally about 70%. So you can think of these as just additional information for you to consider as you think about planning for your changes in your system. Below that are some suggested breakdowns for examining other written complaints data. For example, do written complaint reports also address issues raised in due process complaints? If so, and to what extent? There are three numbers to enter here, and they have to total the total number of complaint reports issued. So this is a breakdown of complaint reports issued. So how many of them uh, were included in a decision from a hearing officer? 
say essentially you have to wait for the hearing officer to finish the complaint report. We'll say six. Say 16 of these maybe had some findings, but not all from a hearing officer. Seems like a fairly high number, and that would leave me with some number. I'll put in 34 here. Notice that that cell above stays red until I get a number that allows these three cells to equal 100%. Okay, so this is the total number of reports issued, and seeing a fairly high number of reports in this case that involve complaints where decisions were made by the hearing officer. To what extent do written complaints address enforcement of prior complaint corrective actions? Again, you can enter numbers here. These are breakdowns of complaints as they're filed. In this case, you may end up with more or less than 100%, depending on the kind of data you have for this part. Complaints withdrawn and the reasons for withdrawal or dismissed, and so on. So each of these in data entry spreadsheets, I'll go to mediation. I already entered numbers here. Mediation has similar kinds of comparison for it, as does complaints and expedited due process hearings. A tab called indicator values summarizes a lot of this information, giving you the four indicator values based on the data you entered, and then potential performance measures of your system. Again, these are like sub-indicators based on the data in Table 7. A page or two like this might be of interest to a planning group if you're thinking about the operation of your system. Finally, there's a tab on issues analysis, and this hasn't got anything in it at the moment. This is for you to use if you find value in this, but start looking at the reasons people file uh, complaints or do process complaints or me go to mediation who files, uh, whether it's the same people filing, uh, disability of the student uh, in filings, how old the students are, and so on. So these issue analyses are things that you would use for your own purposes in planning, uh, not to report to us or to OSEP necessarily, but for your purposes in thinking about how to improve your system. And there's a Table 7 copy in here. Once you've entered the data correctly on the data entry spreadsheets, it's all transferred to this table. You can print this table and submit it as part of your APR. That's optional. Again, if you have a chance to use this, we'd appreciate feedback. Just click this on the spreadsheet and it'll take you directly to the data drill tool evaluation. We appreciate your feedback very much and hope this is of value to you.